Good evening folks, well I've managed to survive yet another year on this spinning ball we call Earth and uh, yeah it's my birthday today and one of the gifts I received was this um, portable turntable or record player if you prefer and it's in the it's a format you'll have seen before and it's a briefcase style and um, yeah I've been wanting to get one of these uh, for a while well I've needed a turntable of some description for a while and um, I didn't know what I wanted for my birthday and I saw it yesterday in the shop and the wife says right I'll just get you that then so it was only £40 which is quite reasonable um, th these come in various styles you know obviously they've all got the turntable but some of them have got a built in CD player uh, some of them have got a built in USB socket so you can basically rip your, your LPs or 45s onto to MP3 and some of them like this one has got built in Bluetooth and uh, yeah, it was forty pounds, which I think is fairly reasonable. Um, it does have um, uh, audio out, you know, you've on the RCA jacks or phono if you prefer. And so I can hook this up to my. I've got a Cambridge audio amp and speakers, and it's superb. So, um, yeah, it's clearly going to be better than using the the internal speakers. Um, one thing I don't like about it is it's got one of these. Uh, DC jacks rather than a standard micro USB or whatever. Um, looking at the label, if it just focuses there, we can see uh, that the input power required is 5 volts at 1 amp and um, speaker output is 2 times 3 watts. And uh, the, th the reason I want to open this up, and well, I haven't told you that, but I'm going to do a sort of minimal teardown on this, is um, yeah, the reason for that is it's, it's only got a 1200 milliamp hour. Uh, battery which you know I haven't tested this for any great period of time but I really don't think that that battery is going to hold up for very long if it's driving you know six watts worth of speakers at full volume and, and running a you know a, a drive motor for the, the turntable itself <clears throat> so I thought we'd do a teardown uh, of the unit um, obviously it might be quite interesting to look inside but the main reason for getting into it um, was just to see the format of the format of the battery and see if it is indeed upgradable. So, without further ado, um, we'll have a look inside. So this is from B and M Stores, which uh, is one of the UK's discount retailers. Um, and I have to say, it is actually reasonably good quality. The sound isn't brilliant, um, but it's what you'd expect for the money. Um, comes with a USB lead like so which is extremely short as you can see I mean that's just on the edges of the camera there it's about probably 60 centimeters in length which is obviously doesn't offer much flexibility and you can't really just get one of these uh, leads off the shelf you know if it was micro USB you could buy a half one two three meter uh, you know, cable off the shelf very easily, but the fact that it's got a you know standard DC plug on the end is quite annoying. Um, so it either means uh, having to use a USB extension lead, um, which I don't like to do when we're you know talking about one amp or two amp um, sort of currents. Um, you know, I'd like a, a proper lead uh, designed for the job. <clears throat> so that's a possible uh, upgrade to it is to to install a. A micro USB socket or something like that. Um, but yeah, sorry, the, the sound quality is actually quite reasonable. Um, you know, it's it's totally acceptable. It will obviously sound better when plugged into an external amplifier and speakers. Uh, the speakers are just on the sides, as you can see there, just behind these little grills, and there's one in each side. Um, Fairly straightforward operation. We've got a switch for turntable or Bluetooth. If we turn it on to Bluetooth and turn it on. Yeah, it plays a little jingle as you turn it on and then when you connect your phone up to it, uh, it's it's fairly fairly reasonable. In fact, let's do that just now. Um see if it works. Right, there we go. So that should be connecting now. And again, plays a little jingle. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, when it's when it's uh, connected. So I'll just get some royalty-free music on Spotify here. And that's yeah, that was about 
two thumbs of the way up and my four in full volume on here. Anyway, that's enough of that. But yeah, that works, works reasonably well. Um, and to put it to turntable, simply turn it to turntable, as you would expect. And when you lift it on, it obviously um, starts the turntable. And when it gets to the end of the, the record, it'll actually stop. It doesn't lift off, it purely just stops. And then you have to lift it off and put it back on the little cradle or whatever you want to call it there. So that's pretty much it. The only other thing is... Um, there's a speed control for 33.5, 45 or 78 uh, RPM. We get a little uh, adapter for, you know, 45 RPM singles that don't have the, the hole in the middle, you know. You just pop that on there and that fills up the, the rest of the space. So, enough talking about it, let's get inside it. So, the only visible screws are in the four corners. And this feels like it's straight into MDF or chipboard, whatever's uh, making up the the case. <clears throat> and you can get these things absolutely everywhere. This is in Temple. Um, which is obviously just a budget brand, but um, from the sticker on the back of the unit, it does actually state B&M stores. So whether it's their own brand or just a, um, you know, they've, they've sort of contracted these guys to, to build the units for them. Uh, I'm not sure. Right, so that's the four screws out. I want to see if this actually just lifts out now. I don't want to force it too much. Hmm, it doesn't seem to want to move. Uh, possibly there is um, there's possibly a screw underneath the turntable. It's just held on by a little circlip. So I'll try just popping that off. If we can. There we go. Alright, so it is belt driven. So we'll just take that off there and see if that will give us any better access. There we go, I think it's possibly glued down slightly. But there we go. Right, so um, it seems fairly modular so we'll just uh, unplug what we need to unplug and that was fairly straightforward so inside we have obviously our um, DC in and phono connectors for the audio output and our two little speakers um, 40 oh, sorry 4 ohm 5 watt speakers just in the side there. On the bottom, um, we've got our audio coming in from the stylus, or the signal coming from the stylus, I should say. We've got a little uh, micro switch, uh, just looks like one of those cheap bear uh, sort of leaf connection ones. Leaf connection, leaf contact, I don't know how you describe it, but the bear uh, switch. We've got a... Uh, um, now I don't think it's a stepper motor, it might be a stepper motor actually. Yeah, there's five connections going into that motor. What do we see? 12 volt DC, that's a high HYE Jet-01. So I might have a look at that online and see what that says. And uh, interestingly, the little switch, rather than soldering directly on, they've just used one of these uh, three-way plugs. And what they've done is they've just pushed that onto the, the connectors and a uh, bit of hot glue in there to stop it from moving about. Um, 
got our PCB here, which is <laughs> unceremoniously hot glued into the, the cavity. And of course, that will be held on with the, the nut for the uh, pot or the switch pot on the um, on the board. Um, but yeah, doesn't look too bad. I suppose it's you know functional. It doesn't need to be screwed in you know that hot glue in fact i don't even think the hot glue is holding that in place by the looks of it is purely just held on with the nut but there's not going to be any pressure and um, obviously if you push down in the switch um that's got potential <coughs> excuse me to flex the board um but yeah i mean the nut holding that in is perfectly acceptable but here's the um here's the the bit i'm interested in and that is the uh, battery so if we just take it out um we can see it's just held in by two screws Okay. And there we have it. Let's see if this reveals anything else. Yeah, I've got some double sided tape on there. Um so it is there we go. It's just an eighteen six fifty and indeed uh, 3.7 volts as you'd expect 1200 milliamp hours so uh, not ideal uh, it does look like it's got some sort of protection on there um, <clears throat> so I think it should be fairly easy to, to replace that now we'll probably get a couple of options and that is to get a, a sort of high capacity 18650 of which you can get you know up to sort of 3000 or 3200 milliamp hours obviously whether that's the real capacity i'm not sure um but the other option is to get you know a, a, a flat type um now i don't have a, a huge one but you, you know this kind of uh, cell um onboard protection and just in this uh, uh silver foil packaging um and if we can get a bigger one a uh, Ideally, something maybe in the order of you know forty eight hundred or five thousand milliamps, something like that. Then clearly this will last an awful lot longer. Um, so yeah, that's something I might do in a future video. But I just thought we'd we'd tear it down. I know it's not a particularly interesting video, but I just thought it'd be interesting to t tear it down and uh, see what was inside and see how easy that would be to upgrade. So, as always, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you wish. And I shall see you soon for another video. Until then, take care and all the best. Bye-bye.